Losing muscle mass is a big concern for people with MS. We can get caught in a domino effect of nerve damage, fatigue, pain, and spasticity, causing us to become more sedentary, and that can lead to muscle loss. And when we have muscle loss, it makes it even harder to move, so we move less, and then we have more muscle loss. Have any of you experienced loss of muscle or reduced muscle tone since diagnosis? Let me know in the comments below. I love to hear from my viewers. Recently, I've been reading a lot of research on gut health, the gut-brain axis, and how they're seeing links between gut health and MS. But a term came across my feed recently that caught my attention, the gut-muscle axis. So, as I usually do, I started looking for information on this. And when I'm looking at research to present to you, I try to find studies that are large, long-term, peer-reviewed, and done by respected scientists and researchers. The research into gut health is fairly new, and research into how gut health affects our muscles is even more new, so please keep in mind that the results shown so far are preliminary. That said, it's really exciting to see what the researchers have found and how it may help us. I particularly love to find research on topics where we can make changes to our diets and lifestyles that can support us to live well with our MS. So I'm gonna ask you to indulge me today as I geek out on this topic. I didn't find anything specifically related to MS, but to people in general. So I guess this video is not just for people with MS, but for everyone. So feel free to share it with your friends and family. The first paper I read was on the effects of acetate on muscle growth in young mice. Acetate is one of the short chain fatty acids that's produced when plant fiber ferments in our colons. As a reminder, short chain fatty acids are produced in our guts when we eat fiber or fermented foods. These fatty acids are super important to our gut health and our overall health. Some of the proven benefits of including a lot of plant fibers in our diets are promoting a healthy microbiome, improving gut barrier integrity, and regulating inflammation. And MS is an inflammatory disease, so I'm all for regulating inflammation. They found that in recent decades, significant progress has been made in understanding the intricate interplay between gut microbiota and skeletal muscle. Herein, we demonstrate that a lack of gut microbiota severely inhibits the skeletal muscle growth and development in young mice. When they changed the gut microbiota or eliminated it, the muscle growth in the mice was negatively affected. And then I read a paper that was on the association between short chain fatty acid intake and development of muscle strength loss among older Japanese adults. This paper concluded that dietary intake of short chain fatty acids may prevent muscle strength decline in community dwelling older adults. And this can be really important to us as we age with our MS too. We want to preserve as much muscle mass as we can. How do we increase the intake of short chain fatty acids into our diets? we need to increase our intake of plant fibers. We can do this by eating more fiber-rich foods like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. And in this study on healthy menopausal women, the results showed a causal effect between gut microbial synthesis of short-chain fatty acid butyrate and appendicular lean mass. Butyrate is one of those short-chain fatty acids that's crucial for gut health, and appendicular lean mass is the lean muscle in our arms and legs. Increasing butyrate production can be done by eating more fiber-rich foods and eating more resistant starches like cooked and cooled potatoes, rice, and pasta. Once they're cooked and then they're cooled, they become resistant starches. Simply reheat them when you're ready to eat and you have resistant starches. Hooray for leftovers! And in this study on muscle mass in older mice, they found short-chain fatty acid could attenuate age-related muscle loss and dysfunction. They were looking at sarcopenia, which is loss of muscle mass, strength, and function that affects older adults. And as I'm getting to be one of those older adults, it was really interesting to me. They found that short-chain fatty acids could help with muscle loss by increasing muscle protein synthesis, the process where the amino acids are incorporated into the muscle protein. So fiber might be the new protein when it comes to having healthy muscles. They also reported this interesting finding. 
Therefore, short-chain fatty acids not only protect the gut barrier, enhance circulatory short-chain fatty acid levels, but also attenuate inflammation status of the colon. One of the many lovely symptoms of MS is bowel dysfunction. Eating more fiber can help our colons to be healthier too. <laughs> Look at me getting excited about colon health. MS has changed me. <laughs> when it comes to how our muscles get fatigued, they said this, treated mice not only had improved muscle function, including grip strength, tetanic and twitch force, but also had better anti-fatigue capacity. The increased mitochondria function may increase an anti-fatigue capacity of slow fiber and high glycogen content could produce energy for prolonged physical activities. Slow twitch fibers are the ones that are built for endurance, so this may help us to be able to do activities longer. And glycogen is the primary form of glucose that's stored in the body. Muscle glycogen is used for muscle activity. And finally, from this study on lower limb strength and reduction of inflammation in elderly that was a randomized double-blind clinical trial, pretty much the gold standard of research, they found that when they gave people a specific prebiotic supplement, that after just 12 weeks, participants had improved lower limb muscle strength and endurance, and the supplements also proved effective in reducing inflammatory markers. How cool is that? So what can we take from all this new and preliminary research? Is eating fiber just as important as eating protein for muscle health? Maybe. One thing for sure is that if we have a happy gut, we have better health. One of the best ways to ensure that our guts are happy and that we have a healthy gut microbiome is to eat a large diversity of plants and avoid ultra-processed foods. When we eat at least 30 different types of plants a week, we're keeping our gut happy and improving our overall health and possibly helping to keep our muscle mass. I know it seems like a lot, but if you break it down to seven days in a week, that's just over four different plants a day. You can do that, right? I bet you can. To see more on what I eat to stay healthy, watch these videos next. And until next time, be well.